Hi students, welcome to the science class. In today's session, under the chapter of getting to know plants, we are going to study about different types of the plants. See, when you are going to see in your ground, the different types of the plants are present. So, some of the plants are very tall, some of the plants are very, uh, that is very, they have a very light height and some of the plants are spread over the land isn't it and also some of the plants are has a flowers some of the plants doesn't has the flowers some of the plants has the big flowers some of the plants has a very small little flowers the, some of the leaves of the plants are very large some of the leaves of the plants are very small isn't it so some of the plants brings some uh, some different types of the fl flowers different colors flowers but some of the plants bearing very only similar types of the flowers so we are going to see different types of the plants in our ground so based on the characters of the plants we are going to divide the plants into based on their character so what are the different types of the plants which we are going to see in our environment that will be studied now so first i am considering herbs you have to remember here you have to you have to see in the ground uh, collect the sum of the plants or you have to observe the plants very carefully so first you have to observe the height of the plants you have to consider the three heights here one it is the height of the plant which is taller than your height the height of the plant that is very smaller than your height the height of the plant which is equal to your size you have to remember you have to carefully observe the characteristics of the plants first character i am taking here the tallness you have to observe the plants which are taller than you you have to observe the plants which are have which has equal size with you the plants which has lower size compared to you and also you have to clearly observe the stem of that both three plants stem of the plants and and also you have to clearly observe here the branches of the plants branches of the plants where the branches are comes so based on these characters we are going to classify the plants into five types here so for first i am taking here herbs the plants which are lower than your size the plants which are lower than your size and with a green and a tender stem if you are going to bend the stem of a plant if it plants very easy that the bend the stem is very tender if it is bends very easy then we are going to call it as a tender stem if the plants the size of the plants is very small compared to you and also has a green and a tender stem such a type of the plants are called it as a herbs here such type of the plants are called it as herbs for example tomato the tomato plant is very smaller than you and the stem of the plant is greenish and also it is very tender that can be bent very easily therefore such a type of the plants are called it as a herbs one example it is tomato under one example it is that is the plant of a chili isn't it a chilli plant that is also comes under the herbs because the height is very small compared to you then second i am considering another one type of the plant which is equals to your size consider a plant you have to clearly observe a plant which is clearly it is it is equal to your height the plants which develops branches near the base see here the uh, in the herbs the branches are not so uh, so close to the ground they are somewhat upper side see in the shrubs the plants which develops branches near the bases of the stem and the stem is hard so when you are going to see the plants which is equal to your size thus first you have to see the stem the stem is hard <coughs> the stem is somewhat hard here it is not a tender the stem is hard but not a thick it is very small but it is a hard and the size of the plant is it is equal to your size and the branches the branches are very near to the base the branches are very near to the base the branches are very near to the base of the stem stem is hard but not a thick such plants are called it as a shrubs the plants which has equal size of you and has this had had the branches towards the bottom of the stem and also the stem is 
not very thick and but it is hard such a type of the plants are called it as a shrubs for example i am considering lemon plant lemon plant it not grows taller than you it is ta it uh, grows equal to your height and the stem of the lemon plant is very hard it is not a tender and the branches are comes towards are very closer to the stem so such types of the plants are called it as a shrubs so another one type of the plant that is called i am taking the plants which are the height of the plants is taller than you taller than you and has a hard and a thick stem and a hard and a thick stem and branches are somewhat away from the stem the branches are somewhat away from the stem the plant which has a high which which has a very taller height and also has a very thick stem and a very hard stem and all the branches are away from the stem that types of the plants are called it as trees here for example mango tree isn't it banyan tree the branches are very away from the stem and the thickness of the stem is very large and the hard the hardness of the stem it is very hard therefore such a type of the plants are called it as a trees and some of the plants with the weak stem see here if you are going to see some of the plants which are present on the earth surface they don't grow up so they don't have the capacity to grow up so see here the plants with the weak stems that cannot stand the plants with the weak stem see in these three cases plants has a strong stem therefore they grow up but some of the plants they don't have a strong stem the plants with the weak stem that cannot stand upright but spread on the ground but spread on the ground such a type of the plants are called it as creepers you have to remember you are going to see different types of the creepers on the land they, they don't grow upright but they grow they spread over the land because they don't have the, the stem of these plants don't have the capacity to grow upright isn't it so therefore they spread over the land such a type of the plants are called it as a creepers for example cucumber creeper it is one of the example for the creepers you are going to see different types of the creepers on your in your ground or in the field so under one type of the creepers are present here so some of the creepers they don't have the capacity to grow upright but they have the capacity to climb other plant that types of the plants are called it as a climbers some of the creepers takes support and a climb upon so you are going to see some of the creepers climb to the other plants isn't it such type of the plants are called it as a climbers for example bitter gourd it is one of the type of the climber here such a different types of the climbers you are going to see in your ground so now you are you are clear about that what are herbs what are shrubs what are trees what are creepers and what are what are the climbers so uh, basically commonly we are going to call it as a tree we are going to call it as a plants but when we are going to specifically call the name of the plants name of the uh, name of the trees that is we are going to classify based on their characteristics as a herbs shrubs trees creepers and the climbers now we are going to study the parts of the plants that is first i am taking the stem the stem it starts with the root and so it starts with the root here so the stem it is a main part of the plant which provides a support to the plant which provides a support to the plant and this stem provides this stem transports water and minerals from the ground towards all part of the all parts of the tree it transports the water and minerals taken by the roots toward all parts of the plant so next part of the plant it is nothing but the leaf if you have to see if you have to first we have to collect the different leaves which are present in your ground the different types of the leaves are present in the ground so you have to collect that different types of the leaves the structure of the leaves it is very different from one plant to the another plant isn't it it is the color of the leaf is also varies isn't it the structure of the leaf is also varies so you have to collect the leaves which are present in your ground or in your home so the part of the leaf that is attached to the stem it is called it as a petiole see here i am 
considering one leaf here a part of a leaf see i am taking one leaf here a part of a leaf this this is the part of a leaf which is connected which is contacted with the stem and this part it is called it as a petiole this is called it as a petiole and the lines on the leaf are called it as a vein so when you are going to see look closely the sum of the lines are present here and the small lines are also present here so these lines these lines are called it as a veins these lines are called it as a veins and a prominent a thick line is present at the middle part of the leaf a prominent thick line a prominent thick line is present and this line it is called it as a midrib so when you are going to consider a leaf the structure of the leaf is very different due to the veins and the midrib here and so this is the prominent vein it is called it as a midrib the design made by the veins so when you are going to see the design made by the veins look at closely here the design made by the veins different so large number of veins are present here many number of veins are present so design made by these veins is it is called it as a leaf venation the design made by these veins it is called it as a leaf venation and if the leaf venation the design of the leaf venation in the net like structure i am considering one of the one of the example here you have to see closely here the design of the leaf venation it is just like a net like structure if you are going to see very closely you can observe here the design of the leaf venation it is just like a net like structure so if the if the leaf venation it is just like a weed that is a net like structure that design it is called it as a reticulate venation which is reticulate venation if the design of the leaf venation if it is net like structure then that is called it as a reticulate venation but when you sometimes when you are going to consider other types of the leaves the veins which are present on the leaves are a parallel i am considering here another one leaf see here in this leaf the veins are parallel 1 2 3 some of the veins are present here so these veins are parallel to each other so such a design if the design of the leaf venation are if the veins are parallel to each other then such a type of the leaf venation it is called it as a parallel venation that is called it as a parallel venation we are going to see two types of the designs in the leaf venation that is nothing but reticulate venation and a parallel venation you have to clearly observe the two two types of the leaf venation in a different types of the plants which plant has a parallel venation and which plant has a reticulate venation and next we are going to come here when you are consider one plant or consider one herb take a one herb and cover some part of the herb with a plastic paper or a plastic cover and tie with the help of any material very tightly and left for 10 to 20 minutes and observe after 10 to 20 minutes you are going to see some of the water drops which are present on the plastic cover so what why the water drops are comes here how the water drops comes here from where the water drops comes here so these water drops car comes from the evaporation of the water or a vapored water comes from the leaves here so this process it is nothing but the transpiration due to the transpiration in the process of transpiration the leaves are going to vaporize the water is it clear the removal of the water from the plants in the form of the vapor from the leaves it is called it as a transpiration so the water droplets which are comes on the plastic due to the transpiration the process of removal of the water in the form of vapor in the leaves that is called it as a transpiration and another one uh, important thing which is happened in the leaf here so you have to remember uh, in the photosynthesis process the leaf has some of the minerals here using that minerals and with the help of the sunlight and the carbon dioxide which is present in the environment in the leaf 
in the process of photosynthesis food will be produced so what is photosynthesis process with the help of the sunlight carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight with the help of carbon dioxide and water the in the leaves plants can going to make the food material that is nothing but the photosynthesis so in that process also the leaves are helpful so the food will be prepared in the leaves and the prepared food will be supplied towards all the parts of the plant, plant body so next another one part of the plant which we are going to study here is root so the root of all trees are not similar and not same we are going to see two types of the roots here that is tap root and a fibrous root so try to check the different types of the roots which are present in the different types of the plants we are going to see two similar types of the roots that is a tap root and the one it is a fibrous root the tap root contains a one main root tap root contains one main root and a small some lateral roots are attached to the main root but a fibrous root there in a fibrous root there is a no main root but all the Uh, lateral roots are similar lateral roots are present here there is a no main root is present but in the tap root one main root is present small lateral roots are attached to it but in the fibrous root the all the roots are similar and there is a no main root is present here so these are the two roots which we are going to see in the plants so now i am going to discuss the another one part of the plant that is nothing but the flower i am taking i am considering one flower here you have to clearly see the part of the flower so when you are going to see the part of the flower the colored very smooth part the colored very smooth part or a bell like structured part these are called it as a petals these are called it as a petals and below the petals you can see here some small leaves leaf like structures you, ha you have to see here some leaf like structures are present and these are called it as a sepals these are called it as a sepals when you are going to cut cut down the or when you are going to remove these petals when you are going to remove these petals you can see here you can see some of the structures here these are the petals i am removing now the petals these are the sepals these are the sepals and you have to see here in this in this flower that this part this part that is nothing but this like structure these are called it as a stamen and the stamen contains anther here see here these are small parts which are present here these are the stamens which are arises from the this main part these are called it as a stamen and yellowish part which is present on it it is called it as a anther by taking both the anther and the filament we can call it as a stamen and the middle part the long middle part it is called it as this is the pistil this is called it as totally it is called it as a pistil the pistil it is arisen from the pistil it is arisen from ovary this part it is called it as a ovary you have to see here this part it is called it as a ovary and if you are going to cut this ovary you can see small bread like structures these are called it as ovules so here in a every flower these are a main important part parts which we are going to see first the bright colored part which are going to see that is called it as the petals the leaves small leaves which are present under the petals are called it as a sepals and the long straight uh, the straight structure which comes from the ovary that is called it as a pistil and this part it is called it as a ovary in the ovary the ovules are present generally the ovary or ovule it is called it as a female sex organ and in the flower these stamen it is called it as a male sex organ using these two 
using the stamen and the ovary or a vivule, the reproduction will be happens in the plant. So, this is all about the structure of the plant, what are the different parts of the plants, how we are going to divide the plants based on the structure, based on the characteristics of the plant. So, in next, this completes your one of the most important lesson that is nothing but getting to know plants. In next session, we are going to continue your next lesson. Thank you.